very comfortable game. A very, very comfortable game for Chelsea indeed. Thiago Silva and Nkunku with the goals and a few standout performances, both in the first and second half. And from my point of view, I'm looking at this Chelsea team and they are starting to cook nicely under Poch. There's great patterns. There's some really good movement. Some of the one-touch football in the attack is a far cry from some of the dross, the lukewarm, poor quality football that we saw from Chelsea on many, many occasions last season. Now, of course, we have to see this translate into Premier League football. I still believe this club needs to go and sign more players, Caicedo or a replacement. Let's talk about another goalkeeper coming in in Sanchez. And we're going we're gonna to look at some of those transfer stories tomorrow on the Football Terrace and the Top 6 show. But overall, when you look at it, it's it's decent from Chelsea. And I've watched I've watched parts of their other preseason games. I watched the full 90 minutes tonight, as I promised the, the Chelsea fans who watched the Terrace that I would. And I do think this team is starting to show the green shoots of growth. There is a togetherness. You can see confidence seeping back into the teams. Now, I would have liked to have seen all of the first team in the first team in my eyes play together. But there was a few players that stood out to me tonight. I was looking, I made a note of them in the game. First of all, Augusto at right back. Really impressive performance. Good on the ball, comfortable. I think there's a player, a real genuine player in there. Chelsea have fallen off so regularly when Reese James has picked up injuries. Now, I'm not convinced that Reese James is over his injury woes. So having a player like Gusto, who can come into the team, is very, very important indeed. I liked uh, Andre Santos in the middle. Again, very solid. Technically very, very gifted indeed. Everybody knows I like Enzo. I thought he was impeccable in the first half. Barring the missed chance and opportunity that he had, he probably should have scored... Uh, it'd be disappointed with that, in my opinion. But overall, a good performance from him. I actually thought Raheem Sterling didn't have too bad a first half. I've seen a lot of criticism of him recently. But Christopher Nkunku just stole the show in terms of the first half performance for me. And listen, good on the ball. Can go left and right. And sometimes that sounds like a very basic thing to say, but being comfortable going left and right is important in the attack. It makes you less predictable, harder to mark, harder to manage, and of course, more of a terror for your opponents. But on top of that, he's goal. Now, many will look at it just as a pure and simple tap in. But as we spoke about many times last season on the terrace about Erling Haaland, those tap ins are not a fluke. And Kunku busts the gut sprints hard, works hard to be in a position where if the goalie parries the ball, if there's a deflection, if it rolls across that six-yard box, he is there to put it in. And for me, Chelsea struggled massively when it came to those types of goals last season. They they were never, they, they just weren't involved with them enough. Too regularly, they, just, they didn't have enough numbers in the box. People were not working hard enough to get themselves into those positions. Now, in terms of the second half, there's a few players there I want to talk about as well. Uh, Levi Caldwell just looks like a Rolls Royce. And I can understand why Liverpool, I can understand why Brighton are all so desperate to take him away from Chelsea. But Chelsea can't let this kid go. Now, I've not seen him play for Chelsea in the Premier League, but I watched him many times last year for Brighton. Top class talent. Top class talent. This is a player that if you were trying to buy him, you'd, you'd be getting charged £80 million in 2023. I believe he's that good. I was also really impressed in the second half. I know he's had a lot of praise already this, this summer, but with Nico Jackson, this guy is going to be a problem. Nico Jackson is going to be a problem for every single Premier League defense out there. He runs the channels. He is electric. He has a very good first touch. He's into play. Tonight looked excellent for me. There was a there was a move fairly early in the second half. Great one-touch football between him and a couple of his teammates. Just offside. They didn't score a goal from it. But again, it's those well, some moments. He also makes run after run after run after run off the shoulder of a defender. So if you're playing a higher line against him, if you haven't got, if you haven't got a defender with the speed of a Saliba marking him, he's going to strip you. Because he isn't just quick. He has brilliant... 
in football, top speed's important, but your acceleration over that first five to 10 yards is key to create some clear blue water between you and the defender around you or the opponent around you. And Jackson looks like a real star in the making. There's a rawness to him, and there was a few times he made mistakes. He should have used Hall on an overlap. There was a shot he snatched at with his right foot fairly late in the second half where I would have preferred to have seen him control the ball, look around, get his head up as an example. And he'll make mistakes because he's young. But you can see the real talent in him. And at 35 million, and I'm not even sure right now if that's pounds or euros. I have to go back and check. He looks like he could be still and his hold up play i said a few years ago and i know the long-standing terrace viewers will, will remember this when everybody was desperate for a Firmino type striker i said maybe what you need to be looking for is a number nine because football is very uh cyclical and it changes marauding fullbacks were all the rage 18 months plus you know back five years now it's about having defensively solid midfielders. And if you're good on the ball, you might move into an inverted position in midfield. Number nines were almost outlawed in the game. You had Harry Kane and you had Benzema and Lewandowski. They were a dying breed. And for a few years, nobody wanted one. Everybody wanted a fluid front three with a, remember, a defensive-minded striker. That was what people were asking for. That's what the hipsters were trying to indoctrinate you into believing was needed. And now we have this new breed of number nines coming through. Of course, Haaland is the shining beacon of the Man United have just signed a young one in Rasmus Hoyland. But Nico Jackson, he was a player when Chelsea signed him. I was very honest. I was very, very honest indeed. I turned around and said, haven't read too much about him. Don't know much about him. But I wanted to be respectful. I wanted to not, I want to make sure I say this in the right way. I didn't want to turn around and say, yeah, I'm writing him off. He's going to be crap. Even when I read the scouting reports, I didn't read too much that stood out at me of he's going to be a star. That just goes to show you, research only goes so far. You have to watch a player. You have to watch him in games. And there is a genuine star, a genuine diamond in the rough here with Jackson. Hold up play, speed, power, good ability on the ball. And he's sh shown an eye a couple of times on this preseason tour for Chelsea, Chelsea to be able to finish and put the ball into the back of the net so there is a real player in there there's no doubt about it at all and i have a few connection issues tonight with the internet i don't know why normally it's brilliant at my house tonight it's it's saying that your wi-fi is not secure it's not even on wi-fi it's plugged straight in so maybe there's a twist somewhere in the lead i'll go and sort that out at another time but uh yeah as i say overall um chelsea fans should be thoroughly i don't know if they've got any more preseason games i'm sure they've got one or two more most teams do it's two weeks to start the premier league but it's been a good tour for them i want to go to some of your comments that are coming through here uh, but our friendly should never have trophies. Yeah, I kind of hear you on that. I'm not really a big fan of that myself. Well, Chelsea are looking frightening, but let's all keep quiet. Yeah, look, I, I think Chelsea is starting to cook. I, we, what I think you'll see in the next two weeks is maybe, I assume, yeah, you guys have got a few more. You've got Dortmund left to play. What I would be asking for against Dortmund, and this is what I'm asking for for my club, is almost you're almost picking the 11 that you think about starting for the first game of the season, and you give them 75 to 80 minutes, some of them even 90 just to see what they look like as a collective. But Chelsea are starting to brew together nicely. Uh, and Mishia says Jackson's hold-up play is ridiculous. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's very, very good. Moose Wizard here says very uh, cautiously optimistic. Jackson looks like, uh, looks to be the real deal. Uh, is it pronounced Mateson uh, is a secret agent. Gasto is a smooth operator too. Yeah, look, I liked him at right back tonight. I really liked him at right back. I thought that I think there's a real player in there. Uh, Miss Shear also says Chelsea looks so different compared to last season. We can finally score goals. And you know what? Look, you've heard me say all summer you should take encouragement from preseason games. But for Chelsea, I think this preseason's key. Last year, your fitness levels were too low. You were battered by teams like Arsenal. And it spilled over into your Premier League season. You need this preseason to build that confidence ahead of the new campaign. There's still work to do for Chelsea. I still don't believe they'll be the finished article. I don't see them in those title races next season. They've always got a chance of a domestic trophy. But I do believe as the season kicks on, they're going to become a stronger and stronger outfit. So there's a lot of work to do. They are cooking. The mill is not complete yet. You know, they're at the early, you, they're, they're at the prep stage right now. You know, they're peeling the potatoes. You know, they're soaking, they're, they're cleaning the meat. They're soaking the veg. That's what they're doing right now. There's a bit of marinating going on. 
but green shoots of hope 110%.